Uh, so uh, we spoke about having multiple regions in an environment. Uh, we also saw how you can create multiple tenants for different organizations. Uh, one of the advantages of doing that is you get complete isolation between those tenants, and then you can also configure quotas at compute block storage or network level and uh, limit your tenants' usage accordingly. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in the UI how you can also configure SSO integration so that you can authenticate using your external IDP and uh, uh, kind of integrate with that. Uh, then lastly, we also have uh, a feature for uh, setting VM leases, which allows you to set like a time bound on how long the VMs need to be running. And there is an option for e either powering off the VMs at the end of that uh, uh, expiration, or you could choose to just shut them down so that uh, somebody can go in and take a look at it. Uh, the next piece is, uh, let's say you have a complex application that requires a, a VM to be created with a specific volume, a network, a security group, and you want to package that as one, uh, one deployment. Um, that is where infrastructure as a code comes in, and you want to automate that using a or infrastructure orchestration template. So this is a sample that I've put on the right side here which also allows you to kind of define these resources and then have auto-scaling support in, in the cases where you want to scale up or scale down your application based on how much CPU it is utilizing. Uh, we also have uh, support for Terraform pro providers, so you could choose to use that as well instead of the hot uh, declarative format. Uh, let me get into the... Uh, then, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to kind of highlight these uh, two features which... Uh, which are uh, virtual machine HA and uh, the DRS equivalent, which is our resource rebalancing mechanism. Uh, so both of these features are uh, available on the VMware side out of the box, and, and uh, this is kind of the uh, equivalent of that. Uh, it allows you to have um, host evacuation uh, when you can detect that a host is down. It, it, it monitors that for about three minutes, and then after that, it will automatically fail over your workloads from uh, from that failed node to one of your uh, active nodes. And uh, for the resource rebalancing, um, it's basically a, a very pluggable framework where you can have different types of goals configured and based on whether your requirement is to consolidate the VMs on fewer nodes and save on the power consumption versus you don't really care, on, care about the power usage, but you want to make sure that your resources are widely spread out across these hosts. You could choose to do that too. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll do, show you. Do you support something like stretch clusters and things of that nature? Uh, stretch clusters on the so on the on the open st uh, stack. So the environment that you have here, uh, I imagine that you would have different uh, regions for uh, separate geographical locations, and they could all be managed via one control plane. Uh, but these are regions that you can independently upgrade and manage, but... Uh, yeah, but I mean, stretch clusters are sort of managed together, but actually separate, right? You can do that. You can do that. What you will do in that case is you can have some host in one location, let's say remote office, another one in another one, and manage from central location. Yeah, you can do that. But you have to be careful about, obviously, the images and the data associated with and, and it. Something like SRM support as well, or how does that play out in this space? So Chris is going to cover that in a minute. Uh, on the backup and the disaster recovery. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take that question when, when he All comes right. in. Uh, so just to save time, uh, I was just going to show how you can deploy a stack using, I just uploaded a YAML file, which is a template with the application here. And um, I can create a... Uh, did I pick a wrong file? I need to go back and check if I uploaded the right template here, but I uh, just wanted to kind of show how you can deploy a stack using this. Um, and then to kind of show the multi-tenancy aspect, right? Uh, so this is where you can go and configure quotas for, for different tenants, and you can set it up as a default value as well, or if you want to set unlimited, you could do that too. Then we have SSO integration as well that an admin can go in and configure. Uh, as part of this, and for the cluster blueprint, uh, I spoke about VMHA earlier, which is available as a toggle in this section. Mm -hmm. And then similarly, I can also enable the resource rebalancing right from the blueprint. And once this is configured, you would uh, see that it's going to start migrating virtual machines. So in this case, if I look at all the VMs that I have currently running, 
uh, will um, see one of them get migrated. So it has already st started migrating this test VM and it will try to consolidate all of them into one node. So demo two is where it's trying to migrate this currently and it will keep doing that periodically for um, certain iterations until that node is uh, kind of provisioned to its capacity. Uh, so that kind of covers the uh, platform features and I'll hand it over back to Chris for the rest of the presentation. I have a quick, real quick question on the multi-tenancy. Is the experience for someone who's not in the core tenant uh, different or is the view basically the exact same as we sh we saw here? Uh, so are you asking in terms of the uh, RBAC policies that may be conflicting? No, I'm asking, so the, if, if I logged in as a someone on a, in a different tenant, mm -hmm. Does the root tenant have the ability to change what they have access to, what they can do, what they're able to? Like, not not necessarily, um, they can't make flavors, but they, I can change what flavors they can access. Right. So, so we offer two types of rules. Uh, one is an administrator rule, which if you log in as an administrator, you can access different uh, tenants and be able to do all the um, networking configurations and flavor creations and all of that. But if you log in as a self-service user, then I'm only able to access that one tenant that I'm a member of. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's been a lot of uh, changes in VMware with respect to, uh, I'll call it NVIDIA and AI support and things of that nature. Do you guys, are you plugged into that? I mean, do you, do you support NVIDIA enterprise services on top of this solution? Um, we can, Rupak and I can, can co-team this. We spent a lot of time looking at AI ML workloads. When we look at that environment, we tend to lean a little bit more towards Kubernetes, just because it's a little bit more of an open and pluggable architecture. Like, if you're going to start running, you know, NVIDIA, and we support all of this, right? If you're going to run NVIDIA on top of or underneath VMs, you're then getting into grid, you're getting into their vGPU licensing where if you move into Kubernetes, you're going to be using containerized applications. It's going to be better. It's just going to be a better fit. And then you can start using things like MIG to start slicing up those VMs and getting a little bit more higher utilization out of the, the GPU than you otherwise would have been in a, v, a VMware environment um, or a virtual machine environment. Of course, it's going to come down to, you know, what's that data science team doing? How are they interacting with those workloads today and where do you want to get them to in the future, right? If they're using VMs, they're probably getting, you know, dedicated access to a portion of the GPU. If someone came to us today and they said, what should we do? I'm going to say Kubernetes on bare metal with GPUs. Let's spin up notebooks on demand through a container service and start moving people through and even maybe leaning into something like a kubevert. I think that's a good, a good opportunity to leverage that type of tech stack as well. If somebody's looking for vGPU support on, on platform nine, yes, uh, we can expose GPUs through that. And if somebody is looking to just have a virtual machine to do their testing, because a lot of data sciences people do want to do that, so that's also possible. 